Hello, welcome to MTG Pro Tutor. I'm Sean Pennard, your host. Let's dive into this Konza Tarkir Booster Pack and see what we get. First thing I do when I ever I open up a pack when I'm drafting, I always take out the marketing card, set it aside, and then take out the land card, and then I always look at our rare. The rare we have here is Sage of the Inward Eye. So for five mana, you get a three, four flying, and whenever you cast a non-creature spell, creatures you control gain life link until end of turn. So whenever you cast a non-creature spell, all your creatures gain lifelink. So, I mean, obviously, obviously this is great with um, Jeskai because you're you're going to want to play non-creature spells and then give them, you know, trigger that prowess. And then on top of that, they get lifelink. So that's nice. Bloodfire Expert, speaking of prowess, is a 3-1 prowess for 3 mana. Saigu Archer, a 2-5 with reach, and it, has, uh, it costs 5 mana. It's very useful. It also has more... Feet of Resistance is the best white common in my opinion. Uh, you, you, you put a plus one plus one counter on target creature, you control, and then it gains protection of a color of your choice until end of turn. The counter stays, and then the protection goes away, but that should be enough to kill whatever creature was blocking it. Shatter, virtually unplayable. There's, I mean, there's just no real um, real good targets for uh, for Shatter. I mean, there's a few enchantment or a few artifacts that are that are, you know, Good, but nothing worth putting shatter in for. Uh, Rakshasa's secret: you uh, your opponent discards two cards, and then you mill yourself for two. Monastery flock: uh, a, a really good defender. It's a zero-five flying, hard to get through, um, easy to flip up. Um, you get you have to find some way to get around it, either uh, wiping the board or removing it, or just getting a bigger creature. Dutiful return: you get two creatures back from your graveyard. That's great for soul tie. Uh, disdainful Stroke. You cannot target a uh, spell with a converted mana cost four or greater. So they, you know, they play a big, you know, bomb card. As long as you have two mana up, you can, you know, get rid of it. All right, putting back Brigade. It gives you a three one one red goblins whenever you play it or turn it face up. So you're gonna get five power on the board for five for six mana. Um, if you morph, then it's for five mana. Then, uh, and and that's and that's spread over spread out over four bodies. So that's pretty good. Just Kai Banner, I still haven't drafted it or you or played a banner, and um, I'm okay with that. Other people really, you know, like them, but I, I don't. Okay, Roar of Challenge, I really like, especially when you combo it with, like, Feet of Resistance, to where um, you play this, and then uh, all their creatures have to block it, and then, um, and then you do Feet of Resistance, giving them protection from, you know, that color. If, if the board, if they only have one color of creature, then, you know, you just blocked, they just blocked one creature in it and it didn't even die so that's nice um and then well i let me take that back <laughs> um if you have ferocious then you don't even need to worry about feet of resistance uh if you don't have ferocious then you trick then you can combo it with feet of resistance but the easiest way is obviously just to do um just to have a ferocious trigger secret plans so this is one of the build around me uncommons if you want to do a secret plans deck you want to take it first pick and then you basically want to build around it. Um, and building around it constitutes playing as many morphs as you possibly can. Uh, it's good to keep your colors nice and lean, sticking as close to green-blue as you possibly can. But if you're going to go all in on the morph thing, then sometimes five-color morph with a couple of secret plans is the way to go. Obviously, it's better the more secret plans you have. Um, really, the deck comes together if you have three secret plans. Uh, two is passable, but three is ideal. Finally, we have Air of the Wilds, which is a solid, solid card. I really like it. So it's a 2-2 Death Touch for two mana, so it's already, it's a bear. It's a 2-2 for two. It has Death Touch, and then on top of that, it has Ferocious, where if um, if you have a creature with power four or greater, it gets plus one, plus one. So it can become a 3-3 Death Touch. Or you can, you know, pump it up, and uh, it gives, it will... Say you pump this up to like a 4-4, four, four, then it's going to give itself plus 1-1, plus one, plus one, turning into a 5-5 five, five with that touch. Alright, so if we're going to go um, creature, then I'm definitely going to take Air of the Wilds. If we're going to go non-creature, I'm going to take uh, Secret Plans. Um, you can build around Secret Plans, and then Air of the Wilds is the best creature in the pack. So uh, I tend to like taking creatures first. I don't, um, I don't like... I personally don't take build around me cards right off the bat. Um, maybe when you're deeper into a set and you're more comfortable with it, you can try it out. But for me, I'm going to be safe and go with uh, Air of the Wilds. So there you have it. Thanks for joining. I'm Sean Penrod, and we'll see you in the next pack.